Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. Now in this video, we are going to talk about the latest Beam app, especially in India. Now this is a specifically video for the Indian users and Indian subscriber. And recently the Beam app was launched by our Prime Minister. And a lot of people, I've just seen a lot of people ranting about that app, that that app is not at all secure. So how is it going on? How much truth is in that much of the ranting that the app is not secure or the website of the app is not secure? And we are going to figure it out all in this video. Let's get started here. So first of all, in case you are not aware, our prime minister has recently rolled out a new application and that app is known as Beam. Now, especially this app is a total pure competition for the Paytm. Now, it is just kind of an online mobile wallet and you can simply get and transfer money via that app. And I know I don't know much idea what the future plans of the app is, but I believe that it's it's having a high competition with the Paytm. Right now, the app is only uh, designed specially for just transferring the money from one account to another account. But maybe later on, they might be switching on depositing of the bills and everything. But that's again a different kind of topic. Right now, I'm just want, I just want to talk about what are the security loopholes on the website, how much truth is there, how much, uh, how the people should react, how the government should react and everybody, just my opinions on to that. So first of all, the now that you are aware that app is there and a lot of iOS user might be searching for the Beam app. Now the Beam app is only being rolled out for the Android and that should obviously being done. That should be the obvious choice because the amount of the people who are using the Android is way bigger than the than the iOS one. iOS are definitely, they are the selected crowd. They are good for payment apps, which requires $10 or $1 or something like that. But if you want to hit the massive crowd, obviously that was a good decision of rolling out the app for the Android user, first of all. Now, after that, I saw a lot of people and it was predicted. Already I was saying that this app is being rolling out. Now the security researchers and the bug bounty hunter will go after that immediately and will search out for the bugs. How much they try hard, eventually there will be news that somebody is trying to get break into the app and app is not at all secure. So that was about to come. Nothing, uh, nothing surprised me at all. But the thing that I'm talking about, how much truth is there in the security app and how much it is not. Let's just start with that. Now, first of all, I have seen quite a rant going on for the website, uh, which is not so secure. People are telling that, hey, just somebody has uploaded a WordPress website for the government domains and uh, they have just not on, they have on, not only deleted uh, a lot of stuff and all that kind of going stuff going on there. Like, for example, they have said uh, the readme.html file was not deleted from the WordPress and a lot of bugs like that. Now, let me be clear on to that topic. Now, if you are saying that the beamapps.co.in or beamapps.in uh, was not so secure, let me get it very clear. These are not government official domains and they are not at all a part of government domains. Now, the one app, the beamapp.co.in and another one is beamapp.in. The one of them is registered by Dilip. He is from Delhi. And another one was registered by Herschel from Ahmedabad. So both of the guys are, have played a master stroke of the SEO. They have just rolled out a WordPress on the domain uh, .co.in and the .in and uh, they have just simply uploaded that on the web page. Now the benefit that they have got, they have got uh, hundreds and hundreds and millions of users within a uh, one day and they have just rolled out some ads. They are earning pretty good. Now, on the other hand, the security researchers, the new ones, I would say, are trying to inject onto the website and are trying to hack and trying to report the vulnerabilities to that website. Again, a simple waste of your valuable time because those websites are just made for the SEO. Within a few weeks or months or year, that website will be gone. They have just earned the traffics and that's it. That, that was only the websites were being registered for. So uh, that's the one failure you will be seeing quite a lot. If you see that the website is not so secure. Yes, that's that's going on there. Again, uh, most of the government and in fact, all of the government websites are registered on gov.in and all of that. If you found a vulnerability there, in case, let's talk about it there. You may report that. Now, why I'm talking about you may report there. Now, you might have been familiar with the recent stuff that a lot of people are going on with the bug bounties. Now, let me first try to clear up what the whole concept is because a lot of people have just gone over through the concept and are just worrying about the reporting the bugs and getting money. Let me just very clear here. So 
the whole concept is let's just say xyz has designed a website and has invited some hackers through the platforms like HackerOne or the bugcrowd.com and they are saying that hey we are inviting people because we care about our users and we want our application to be much more secure we are inviting attackers to attack on our website or a specific domain and report us the bugs and on return in beh on behalf of that we may give them award okay we may give them award so that's what all is going on with the Beam app. A few users tried to report the bugs in their app. And again, uh, I'm not pretty sure that if there was vulnerability or not, but they have said that there were few vulnerabilities. We tried to report to the government and government is threatening us uh, with an FIR or trying to put us a cyber crime on us. Yes, they can, surely, because they have not invited you to uh, test their apps. You are deliberately going and testing into their app. You are just taking uh, things into your hand without an invitation. So that may happen. That's completely OK. Now, a lot of people are going to rant over me and we're going to say that, hey, we report sometimes bugs on Facebook, sometimes on Uber, and they are not registered on the bug crowd or hacker one. Still, they accept our uh, bounties and pay us some bounties, accept our bugs and things like that. But again, those are big organization and sometime, sometime the organization wants you to award for what you have found uh, because that might be the procedure over there. That might not be the procedure on another domain. And in fact, I have seen many other uh, websites, especially uh, I remember the HP one initially, they were not having any bug payments and all those steps. So if somebody used to report the bug in there, uh, they used to threaten back that, hey, who allowed you to test on our website? It used to be a case at one time, but now it's not the case. So the whole point is if you have found a vulnerability and somebody is not giving you any award or is even threatening you to report an FIR, for sure they can. They are completely valid and have good reasons to do so. I'm not saying this is a solution. I'm providing any solution like uh, you should not report. Yes, definitely you should report. Uh, but again, there are some consequences because uh, security researchers are getting invited without getting an invitation. So that might be a cause. But again, I think that somehow government should understand that what security researchers try, are trying to do is report a sensible uh, disclosure there. They are not uh, making a public hype of that, although they can somehow with the help of media and everything. Of course, they have to face consequences on behalf of that as well. But again, they are trying to make a responsible disclosure and government should understand that uh, you should take care, take them very seriously and try to patch those security bugs. Of course, they are going to patch them too uh, because somebody has reported the bug and uh, they don't want to give any words. OK, don't give them, but at least patch them. Now, I can also understand that there is a shortage of the security researcher because uh, people are either only in the security domain or only into the development. There is no mixed hybrid of somebody who is uh, quite good in security and good in the development phase as well. So that development and security can be an integral part of a development process. This is very tough. And some of you might not get agree with me, but believe me, uh, you can count on the hand the peoples who are into both the domains. They are very selective. People just enjoy their work in the information security domain and they just like to stick there. And putting their hands into the development is a little bit different and it's their choice, I'm all I'm saying. So this was the whole idea and my views about what's going on ranting about the bugs in the website and in the app itself. And as I read on their blog and everything, uh, I found out that uh, very soon they are also going to release the iOS app version as well. And uh, I know a lot of people are going to come up and talk about the securities again. But my request to the government is simply to just take those advice seriously. Now, you should definitely register uh, these kinds of app uh, into HackerOne or something so that it can make uh, we can make the app much more secure. But again, I'm no one to uh, advise the government out there. Uh, but again, I believe I should put out that thought. Let me know what are your thoughts about how the government processings are working with the apps. Do you like the apps or not? What are the things that you want to see uh, more in the apps? Maybe, maybe let's just say somebody is uh, watching my videos uh, in the house of the government people. So somebody might uh, look out at your comment and can say, hey, we need that guy and we really want that feature. So with this, I'll catch you up in the next video. And in case you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, do hit the subscribe button and make sure if you like the video, do hit the like button. And if in case you didn't like the video, no harsh feeling, I'll try even better next time.